Not many mainstream video games are made or marketed with women in mind. However, 40% of video game players in the United States and Canada are female. That and some creative work experience enticed Brenda Bailey Gershkovich, former COO of Deep Fried Entertainment, to start a new venture with former executive producer Radical Entertainment, Kirsten Forbes. Their gaming company is called Silicon Sisters. It is my pleasure to welcome Brenda Bailey Gershkovich, the CEO of Silicon Sisters, to Studio 4 to tell us more. More. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, a female gamer. Yes. And you're not such a rare bird, I understand. <laughs> We're becoming less and less rare. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you get into it in the beginning? In the beginning, oh, well, I actually uh, was drawn to games when I was a young girl. And um, that's a long time ago, in the Nanaimo. <laughs> not the, that long ago, trust uh, me. Well, back in those days, you had to actually go to an arcade to play games. So. It's, it's changed a lot. Now I have, everyone has a gaming device in their pocket. But yes. back then you'd have to go to the arcade and put your quarters in. And I really enjoyed games. Um, you know, I, I remember when Pong first came out when I was mm -hmm. in grade five. So I, I was a gamer from the very beginning. And then, like many people, especially women, uh, went through a period where I didn't game at all. And I think that that paralleled a time in the, in the industry where the games industry became very uh, focused on building games for men and boys. And we kind of got lost for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think that's changing. But you uh, did play men and boy games. Yeah, but not not as much. You know, mm -hmm. not as much. I, I, I went quite a while without playing that many games. Mm -hmm. I think um, Nintendo products appealed to me, but the, the vast majority of games that guys were sure. playing didn't. Maybe Tetris. I love Tetris. Maybe Scrabble. Oh, yes. OK, but it seems to me, watching my grandson, Yes play these games. There's aliens and war and murder and crime and racing and he's yeah. always killing something. Yes. What about girl games? What's well, the essence of a good girl game or a woman game? Well and this is a very interesting question. Um, one of the reasons we formed the studio was that I was sitting in a conference about games and I of course was working in the guy game world and building baseball games actually was what I was doing. With Deep Fried. With Deep Fried. We did baseball games and racing games and the, which was great fun but they weren't yeah. games that I was particularly compelled mm -hmm. to play. And I was listening to a lecture by Bill Mooney who's um, a higher up in Zynga, a very successful company. And he was saying, you know, video games are really about us playing our fantasy. And he talked about, you know, you can be James Bond, you can race cars through the streets of Milan, you can, all these wonderful things you can do. You can be a hero in World War II, you can, and he went on and on. And I thought, these are male fantasies. You know, what, what have we really done to build female fantasy? And what is that anyways? Exactly, right? good question. What do women what really it? want? Yeah, what do women really want? Mm -hmm. And I don't have the answer to that, but that's the question we're playing with. So it's interesting because what, what we've done with Silicon Sisters is when we got started, we spent about six months researching the question of what makes men and women different in the way that they consume games. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's, there's fascinating research out there. There are actually games studies programs in universities, just like there are movie studies programs. Sure. So um, we looked at about six months worth of research and built what we call our games bible. And we took that research and boiled it down to things that were unique to women and how they engaged with this content. Mm. And now we're taking that information and translating it into games. So in the games bible for women, Yes. what are the rules? What uh, it, we're putting together, and I know you are, you're putting together School 26. Is, yes. it, is this your first one? It is. Okay, tell me about School 26, and then we'll figure out what the elements are okay, that make it good. rock. All right, okay. So School 26 is uh, the story of Kate, and Kate has, poor kid, been to 25 different schools already. Her parents are psychic healers, and they're always trying to find a town that has the right feel for them to build their, their clinic, and they're always getting run out of town. And, and Kate's really at the end of her tolerance with this and she makes a deal with her parents that in this current town if she's able to connect with the kids at the school and and make strong friendships that she'll get to stay there till she graduates and not be moved around mm. anymore so Kate's very compelled to to build strong relationships but the school that she comes into the kids have a lot of problems and issues and it's not dissimilar to most high schools and so Kate goes in with the goal of of really solving some of those situations in order to build strong relationships. So what's unique about this game is that the primary tool is empathy. How great. So Kate is the amateur psychologist, as all Pretty women much. are. Exactly. We tell our girlfriends everything on the school bus from the time we're about six. That's right. Don't we? We do. And then they help us yes. solve all the life exactly. problems. 
So we're social engineers. That's exactly correct. And we're not lightweight in any, no. uh, in any demand, but I talked to a man who ran a seminar called Women, Sex, and Power, and he said, mm -hmm. women run the relationships. Mm -hmm. They just do. Yeah. Men aren't that interested in running them. Yeah. You run them. You do the dance, they'll follow. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that's true. Well, what's really interesting is that those skills are so important. You know, mm. We've written them off for many years, but when I did my MBA, for example, there was so much focus on emotional intelligence, and to me it was... Of course we do that. Right. These are such natural ways of being. Mm -hmm. Trust your gut. Yes, all of those things. And and I think that those skills that girls are practicing in School 26, and maybe boys are practicing in the game as well, are really useful skills mm -hmm. and will carry on to all aspects sure, of Sure, but these women are not Barbie-like. They're no. strong, yeah. together, I'm yeah. assuming. Well, they're Maybe they're Kate young is, girls. and I'm not sure. How, well, how young is Kate? We haven't put an age on her. Okay. So she's somewhere between 12 and 16 maybe 17 mm -hmm. in the stretch. But they're not Barbie dolls and neither are they, they're just a range of normal kids. They're just very normal looking kids. And um, they're kids that you know the everyday person would relate to. And the issues that they're facing are very normal issues. Right, and you're not pinkifying the games no. and you can define that term for me. Okay, well I'll give you an example. We, what we see happening right now in the games industry is that there are more and more women getting interested in playing games because games are smaller and easier to access and they're really fun. But what very often happens is that in building games for women, um, first of all, the industry is about 80% men and they're not really that connected with how to build games for women, in my you opinion. You noticed. <laughs> in my opinion. Okay. But, so what very often happens when they want to make a product for a woman or a girl is mm -hmm. that they will they will make it pink and they'll put in a pony and a rainbow and, and hope mm -hmm. that sells. Or a bikini. Or a bikini, right. <laughs> but but the difficulty is that they are selling, but it's a very superficial relationship right. and they're they're appealing to very lightweight things sure. that that don't provide the depth of gameplay and interest that mm -hmm. you know a parallel game for a boy might provide. And and that concerns me. So the real question for me is why does any of this matter? Right? Does it right. does it matter if girls play games? And and it does for me sure. in particular. But we fought to play games and you know to have people come to our hockey games and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So of course it matters. Well, and it matters because we know that the there's some really interesting research that came out at the University of Calgary about mm. three weeks ago, and one of the things they looked at in depth was um, how people become interested in technology and comfortable with technology. And one of the major ways is through playing video games. And you've probably really? noticed that with boys. Boys who play games a lot are really comfortable with computers mm -hmm. and really you know, know how to code their mobile phone. Well, we want girls to be able to live in that world Sure, high-tech women, wired women. Uh, there are women, they're called killer Bettys. Yes. I don't know if that's your term, but the killer Actually, Bettys. my partner came up with it. Really? And they like to play Call of Duty and yeah. Black Ops. That's right. Uh, tough games. Yes. And it's okay. It's not that if you're a guy you have to play this game or a girl you no. have to play that game. That's not the point. The no. point is give me a game that intrigues me. Yes. That I want to play. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And there are gals who've always played sort of core, what we call core games, those types of games. But there are only about, you know, 13 to 20 percent of the market sure. that are doing that. So Hardcore women gamers allowed. Men are allowed to play School 26. Absolutely. Do you think they will? Well, it's interesting. I, I have a son who's 19 who's at uh, university, and he came home and tried the game, and he found it a little tough. And he said, Mom, this is interesting because this might even help me you know, deal with the relationships in my life. And sure. I thought, wow, that's, that's an interesting secondary market. Uh-huh. And well, it's a safe place to do it. Yes. Because they may not want to ask their mother or their girlfriend no. or talk to their uh, golf buddies yeah. about what's going on in their life. That's right. But if they get a little hint yes. from uh, School 26, sure. well, yeah. why not? What, have you got another one planned? What's the future? Yes, we do. So it's in the wakes. It's in the works, yeah. Our next game, actually, I'm the target audience for. It's sort of mid-40s women, and um, it's it's a fun game that's about the crazy juggles in life that we oh, do. Oh, great. And, Multitasking, yeah. yummy mummies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just mm -hmm. a fun, laugh-out-loud kind of stress relief game. How great. Because, again, when you need some relief yeah. from the kids and the dogs and the driving and the yeah. job and the... Exactly. The husband. Yeah. Why not play yeah, a game? Exactly. And there's unisex games like Scrabble, mm -hmm. Solitaire, things like sure. that. But this is like gaming games. This is yeah. like action. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What? How big is this business worldwide? Billions? Oh, $38 billion industry worldwide and growing. $38 billion. Yeah. yeah. Mm, how many women are in it? 
well, designing games? Fewer than we would like to see, actually. Mm. So um, it really depends on, on you know, which survey you're looking at, but generally it's less than 20% of the development community. And there's recently been a study out of the UK that shows it's as low as 5% there. So really? We're, we're quite underrepresented. So uh, the Silicon Sisters aren't underrepresented. No. Are you? No. Uh, do you, I, I know you don't go out just to hire women. That's not we the don't. point. The point no. is if you find a woman who's really into uh, technology, yeah and designing, because it's artistic. It would right. seem to me artistic, Absolutely. intellectual, yes, very much so. playful. Yep, so the way that we've approached it is, um, I believe that men can make good games for women if that's something they're interested and passionate about. Because we have a great capacity to empathize. So mm -hmm. we can imagine ourselves as someone else and build something for them if they're passionate to do that. But most guys in the game industry want to build games that they want to play. That's why they came into the game industry. So it is tough to find folks who, who really want to build you know, a game mm -hmm. for girls. Um, in our studio, we're about, I think, 65, 70% women. And the guys that are working for us are wonderful and huge contributors. I'm and sure. really enjoying what they're doing. And it must be fun. It is fun. Like, work should be fun. We know that. And yeah. I know it's a lot of work work, because yes. you have COOs and CEOs and bottom lines and budgets and all of that and distribution, sure. what it takes to get it off the ground. Yeah. But the Silicon Sisters, uh, somebody wrote, perhaps yourself, aren't just a couple of geeky girls with blind ambition. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that. You hadn't? <laughs> it says right here, both women have championed making games that resonate with the female audience. Great. It's great because, you know, they, they've changed the Barbie doll. She has a briefcase now. I saw I saw Barbie, uh, Doctor Barbie, on TV recently. Oh, did you? Yeah, so Barbie's a doctor now. Yes. So in no way is, is this demeaning to women. It no. just says, "Hit me where I live. Yeah. Hit me how I function." Yeah. Uh, I, I can be the premier of British Columbia. I mm -hmm. may do it differently if I'm female than the last premier of British yeah. Columbia, and equally as effective as Absolutely. the last premier of British Columbia. Absolutely. We're just claiming a larger range. Right. It's not a gender issue in any way. No. Do you have a favorite game you play? Are you addicted just a bit? <laughs> Actually, one of the things that prompted me to start Silicon Sisters was I became quite addicted to a game called Portal. And it's not a game that someone like me would normally play. It's, you, you know, you've got your shooting, and you're, but you're using um, blasting to move your way through and to find puzzles, right. and it's a fascinating game. And when I was playing that game so much, I kept bumping into other women who were playing Portal as well. And I thought, wasn't that interesting? Like, what is it about Portal that has us so engaged? Like, why are so many women playing this? And I found out that one of the main designers for Portal was a woman. Okay. And I looked back at the games that I've played and really enjoyed, mm -hmm. and 100% of them had women involved in the design team. So I really think there's something to that. I really think there's something special about women designing games for women. Sure. Uh, different music. Uh, different everything, mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. It's been a pleasure. Hi to Kirsten, the partner. I guess she's back at the office working. Keeping things going, I Excellent. know. Excellent. <laughs> we like that. Brenda Bailey Gershkovich, uh, one of the Silicon Sisters.